So today I just want to do a real quick update on the incubator and the eggs and uh, I have the incubator out in my living room because um, it stays relatively cool out here you know with the air conditioner on and everything um, in, the, in the mid 70s uh, if I would have the incubator back in the lizard room it's so warm back there that the temperature constantly ran high even with uh, the thermostat so it was probably uh, two years ago, much to my uh, wife's chagrin, that I started bringing the uh, incubator out here. It was just getting too too warm back there. Anyways, it's a uh, Hovabator model 1602N. Just a styrofoam type, no forced air circulation, nothing like that. Uh, comes with a little wafer thermostat, but I do not use that. As you can see, the light just went off. Uh, this is a Vivarium Electronics. This is just a uh, thermometer. I use a really dusty because it's sitting on the floor in here and I got furry friends that run around the house. I use a Vivarium Electronics VE100. Um, I just have this turned all the way up to high but it's actually plugged into this. So the probe is set at 84 degrees. Temperature 84 degrees. Now this is I, I, there may be more accurate models. This has suited me well the last couple of years. It'll, it'll go down to 82 and it'll go up to 86. Um, but it stays you know, I mean, I guess that plus or minus two degrees is done okay for me. So that's what I use, brand of, of incubator, just another uh, thermometer, just as a backup, and also this this uh, gauges humidity. So right now it's sitting at about 88 percent. And we'll go ahead and take a look at the eggs. Right now I have um, the 38 eggs that Tiamat laid last weekend. Those are in here, and I have um, a several Anolis Smallwoodi eggs and I think I have about four Anolis Barracoa eggs still incubating. So let me put this back on the floor over here. And generally what I do is when I'm in here and I'm, I'm checking the uh, checking the eggs, seeing if I have any baby night Anolis because I'm nowhere near having uh, baby spiny tail iguanas yet, is I'll just take the lid off and set it off to the side. So well, just kind of what I thought, um, again, a week ago, Tiamat laid 38 eggs, and that's in one, two, three, four, five containers, and as you can see, those three look good, those three obviously are not good, so we're going to go in and take those out, and just set them behind me, I'll talk a little bit about this incubation medium here in a minute, um, sweep that up and if there's any that's just sand but it, um, see how this is looking light what I use is Pangea hatch and that's one of the indicators you know that you need to add some more water and I use distilled water so I'm gonna have to moisten that up and let that get dark I'll do that here in a minute show you guys but I'm just gently setting the lid back on there so that's three eggs down we look into this one those five are still looking good this one it's dented in, it's getting a little little uh, fungus growing on it, it's awful mushy. So I'm going to take that one out, and, and I need to add water to that too. So I'll set you back there. And then we go to this guy. Obviously, two more bad eggs. And if you, if you look, this container, maybe because I had more medium in it, looks a lot darker the medium and I don't know how it's going to show up I got an overhead LED bulb because I really don't have a you know good light in the but this is much the medium is much darker than this so this definitely needs to have some water added to it which I will do in a minute so this little guy might be going next and I think I told you guys they only hooked up once. It was kind of a surprise hookup. Tiamat may have laid a whole bunch of eggs anyway. They do lay lay eggs even if they're not fertile. Or excuse me, even if they haven't made it. So it may be that all these go bad. I hope not. Oh boy. And then look at that. So then I got one, two, and these are sticky and they're yellow. Three, four. And I'll go ahead and take this one out. Uh, that's not looking good. 
but that the, this powdery stuff that's the sand from the lay box but I need to add water to this one too so we'll put that there and the last one of two mats is this one and other than the medium being a little dry I gotta add some water to it those all those six all look good so what else do I have here these are Anola Sparacoa and that guy's about to hop, hatch any second now I hope you guys can see that okay these are dark but they feel good and they don't smell bad so I'm gonna keep them in there um, but this guy's about to hatch any second now. I expect him any time now. As a matter of fact, when I opened it, I was hoping to have a baby, baby night and all of some species in here. These two are Anola Smallwood Eye Eggs, and they also are about to hatch at any time now. And see how dark that is? That's nice and moist. I got to make the uh, the the spiny tail iguana eggs medium that way. And then these also. Are all Anola Smallwood eye eggs. So the most recent one that I recovered all the way around, and then these two were the oldest ones. I think I grabbed this guy out two days ago. And see how nice and dark that is. So those are good. So let me put the lid on real quick. I'm gonna go get some distilled water, and I'll show you guys how I uh, gonna moisten up those uh, spiny tail iguana eggs. All right, so we're back. It's just a couple minutes later. You see the temperature dropped two degrees while I had the lid off. And there you can see that the, the heating element is running because the light's on. But, and the, the thermostat says it went down to 81. And that shows 82. So there's a little variation there. But we're not going to be much longer. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of this, like I said. Set this off to the side. Interesting story. My son, when this was on, accidentally grabbed... The heating element one time really quick and got him a little blister on his uh, in his finger so he has uh, since learned but I just got a little thing of uh, distilled water I got a syringe and I'm sure somebody out there knows of a better way to do it but I really just need to you know get some more moisture in here and I hope you guys can see that I'm gonna grab I got a little mini tripod set up next to me here put my glasses on so I can you guys can see what I'm doing. Sorry for the shake. But, and I'm one handed with this really tight syringe. And really, I just, uh, you know, I just want to get some moisture back into this medium here. And there's probably a better way of doing this. You know, trial and error. If my wife was in here, she would, she would definitely tell me there was a better way of doing it. But in addition to the uh, incubation medium, which is, again, Pangea hatch, it's like a clay-type clay structure, um, gets lighter as it dries out, let you, letting you know you need to add stuff to it. Um, where was I going with that? Oh, yeah, humidity. Um, on the bottom of this, you can see it's a little, little dirty. I hope you can see, but there's a tray underneath that, that, um, that grid there. And it's a reservoir, so I keep water in that too. So that helps keep the whole thing. So even if these go dry for a day or two before I get a chance to get to them, uh, it is still humid in here. And I will occasionally put a little bit of water on the eggs. And I, you know, I know, I guess some people might not want to do that. But the way I look at it is, you know, especially with the nitinols, I mean, that might do dig a little two inch depression and you know bury their eggs in the wild at the base of a tree or the base of a plant or a bush and if there's a torrential downpour you know they're getting wet so I don't think it's really going to hurt them and I don't do it all the time but you know I don't drench them or anything but I got to keep them you know got to keep the medium moist I did used to use vermiculite and I got a little horror story to tell you about vermiculite, and I know it's tried and true. It's been tried and true for me. I had two, I came across two Anola Smallwood Eye, probably about two and a half, three weeks ago, I think. And they were both dead in this container right here that used to be vermiculite. 
and they were gaping and their mouths were full of vermiculite so I don't know I generally check this thing more than more than once a day you know at least once a day and I thought maybe I missed a day and I didn't get them out in time so that's completely on me and not to say that they couldn't I guess they could swallow a little clay but that vermiculite as you guys know is um, much much more um, you know it's lighter um, so I went ahead and got a big bag of Pangea Hatch from a local reptile specialty store and I changed everything over to Pangea Hatch and it seems to be working okay and pardon me probably fast forward to some of this or edit it parts out but it can be a little pain in the butt with this syringe but I don't want to just dump water in there I want to make sure it's spread out and so that's why I use the syringe go around the go around the perimeter of the deli cup okay get in between the eggs drop or two on the eggs no big deal and I'm gonna check this again tomorrow see if uh, the clay has absorbed all the water and this syringe is kicking my butt all right this one might be the next one to go I'm not sure what that oops and I never I don't mark the tops of them because I'm really careful when I recover them or at least I try to be and then I keep them more in it the same way each time all right so I'll just put you back on top there and each of these deli cups has holes punched in the side that one still looks good that one man we'll put a little bit of water in there I think this guy right here might be the next one I yank out So I don't worry too much about putting these lids on tight because last year it took about 84 days for my spiny tail iguanas to hatch out. The uh, nidinoles, I don't want them running around in here, so these lids are on tight. Uh, their incubation is about 45 days. So let me get this lid back on. And I'm gonna slide, slide it out of the way so it's not on the floor. Put that right there. Let's see how much heat the thermometer says we've lost. So it says we're down to 80 and 80% 80 humidity. So we lost a little bit of humidity. We lost a few degrees. But so, whew. so I imagine it got a little dark in here. That was just a real quick update on the incubator for this uh, first Sunday of July. With any luck, I'll, uh, you know, about two and a half months I'll have some baby spiny tail iguanas but unfortunately not all of the eggs uh, were fertile which I didn't think they would be but what I pull out one two three four five six seven eight nine ten I've just pulled out eleven eggs that have gone bad out of the thirty eight so leaving me with uh, twenty seven eggs still in the incubator um, I imagine I'll lose a couple of those a few of them uh, Tiamat's first clutch, um, I lost all of her eggs, and in the second season she laid eggs. She laid 22, 23, 16 of those hatched, and then her, she double clutched last year, and her second clutch last year she laid in excess of 24 eggs, not as many as this year, and only one of them hatched. So uh, it is possible that I'm going to lose quite a few more eggs, but I'll keep you guys up to date. Um, so really... Uh, that's all I have for you guys today just an incubator update uh, if you have any questions about you know if I'm talking too fast or something doesn't make sense just feel free to ask um, it's worked well for me I might need to uh, might, might need to expand my incubating capability here soon um, I really would like to do an experiment having multiple hovabaters with different temperatures especially where the nitinols are concerned to see uh, you know what temperature produces what sexes things like that but I have it set at 84 so it fluctuates plus or minus two degrees either way and I try to keep the humidity in the 80 range um, but I think that's it for this fine Sunday uh, thank you guys for watching please like share comment subscribe if you like what you see if you like some of my other videos um, 
constructive criticism is always welcome. So please, if you think I should be doing something or doing something differently, don't hesitate to let me know. And uh, I will be doing a room tour, and I also want to do a video just on nidanoles. I have three different species of nidanoles. Uh, I love them. They're my favorite lizard. Uh, and I, you know, I'll just do a video talking about them and, and why I love them. I still got to figure that one out. I mean, they're not the most personable of lizards, but I just think they're beautiful, and they make uh, awesome terrarium inhabitants. So that's it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed. Take care.